see here at the base entry, I've selected is DC equals Tivoli, DC equals demo. So I'm going to use that. Now, uh, it says uh, that the first parameter is required and the second field is not. However, through my testing, I've identified that that is not true. They need to both be uh, filled in. They don't necessarily need to be the same, but I recommend it because that's the way I've tested it. Um, so I will fill in uh, the same for both. Uh, and the base entry here is essentially where it's going to start looking for any search when it does a lookup. It's going to start in that uh, directory of the tree so that the searching can resolve quicker. So click apply and save the changes. And you can click OK. Now we see here on the base entry, we have it listed as DC Tivoli, DC Demo, and our repository is listed there as Atom. So now we can go back into our repository by clicking on Atom. And we can go down to the additional properties and see now we have more properties we can configure. What we want to change is the LDAP entity types. We click that. And we see here three different entity types. We see here group, or container, and person account. Now these are essentially defining what to look up and where to look up for the different entity types inside of the directory tree. So again, this is for resolving searches faster for particular types of entities. So we can go look into the group. And we see here it's going to look for object classes group. And we can give it a search-based look in so it doesn't look through the whole tree. This is very important, again, um, if you are using this in an enterprise environment with a very large LDAP tree. So I can click OK. And I can do the same for org container. And we see here object classes are organization, organizational unit, domain, and container. Uh, the short names for these are C, D, O, U, and O inside of the tree, so you can uh, correlate them between what's in your tree and what you're searching for. You can use the same base again, click OK. And then person account is user, so it's going to look for uh, objects of type user, and I'm going to give the same base again, and click OK, and click Save. All right. Now, I'm going to go back to our federated repositories by clicking on this link. And I'm going to go, uh, we have to go and change the realm name as I had uh, hinted at in the beginning. So this realm name is very important. It essentially is what defines the realm which applications will share credentials between. So in order to share credentials between the tab and the tip, they both need to be in the same realm. So this realm name has to be the same for both uh, applications. So I'm going to change it because I7 realm by default doesn't make too much sense in my environment. I'll make it more sensible for me. So I'm going to call it Tivoli dash realm. Now, you don't need to change it as long as it's the same on both. <clears throat> and then you see primary administrative username is listed by tip as tip admin by default. Now, I recommend leaving this alone, leaving this whatever it is by default, because it will authenticate against the file base repository. So just in case your LDAP server is unavailable for authentication, you can still log in and make changes to the security permissions and everything else uh, in that case. So I would recommend leaving that alone. And then we're going to click Apply and click Save button. And now we see it's changed to Tivoli dash room. All right, so now that we've done that, we need to go and enable SSO now that we've configured our uh, LDAP repository. And we do that by going back to the secure administration, which I am at now, and go on to web security, and you see single sign-on. So under the Configuration tab, I need to click on the Enable checkbox. And I also need to specify a domain name. Now this domain name is important because this will determine whether or not credentials will be forwarded from one application to the next. 
and it's based on the URL. So if you you must if you must use the fully qualified domain name for any application between which you want to share credentials because it's going to key off of whether or not that application is in the same domain to do so. So in my example, my domain name is Tivoli.demo. So I click on OK and click on Save. And we're good to go with SSO being enabled. So now that all those settings have been changed, we need to restart our TIP server. So I am going to log out and I am going to min minimize and go to start programs TCR since the tip instance is running on T is, is, is running for TCR I can use the, the start and stop TCR uh, bat files that are uh, produced with the installation. Um, I'm not going to do that here. Uh, it takes some time. I'll just pause the video. Okay, so now that we've started, stopped it, we need now need to start it. So we do so, and I'll pause. Okay, now that it's been started back up again, we can go back, log in to the tip, and we can log in as tip admin again. And if everything went well, we can uh, verify that the LDAP users are there by going to Users and Groups and selecting Manage Users. And if we do a search for anybody, we should see users that are inside of our LDAP tree. Essentially, any user that is not listed as being part of the file-based realm means it's pulling from LDAP. So we have successfully verified it is working. So now we need to configure this single sign-on key for the tip. So what we're going to do is go under security, select secure administration, and we're going to go under uh, authentication mechanisms and expiration. Now here there's a few configuration settings, uh, some of which I'll touch on. Under authentication expiration, you have one listed for cache timeout and one listed for forwarding credentials. The cache timeout is the one everyone's familiar with. If you're logged into the tip for 10 minutes without activity, uh, any more than 10 minutes, then you'll have to re-log in uh, again. Now, the timeout value for forwarding credentials is different. This is saying, how long will you have to forward credentials between the TIP and some other application that's in the same realm and it's part of the same domain? So by default, I believe that's uh, one day's worth of minutes. So that means if I log into the TIP, I have one day from that time in order to share my credentials to another application for single sign -up. So that's good. And then on the, under the cross cell single sign-on, we see here uh, where we can import and export keys for single sign-on. So we need to first give a password for encryption purposes and confirm it. And then we need to list the fully qualified key file name, essentially where in the file system it's going, the key is going to be stored. So I've already... Uh, going to select uh, just the C directory and I'm going to call it tip-key.txt uh, you can name it whatever you want there's nothing special about the txt file extension here and then I click on export key and you see here a message says it was successfully exported okay now it's very important that you name it something like tip something because if you don't do so you'll be confused on which key is which because we're going to need to make one key for the tip as well. Okay, so now we're done with that. Um, we can uh, now uh, log out of the tip and we need to configure the tip. Now when we do that we traditionally